Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. We're the Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And here's our review for Howard. Howard is a documentary written and directed by Don Hahn about the life of songwriter, lyricist, Howard Ashman. As you guys remember from the trailer reaction that we did to Howard um, based on Howard Ashman, who we actually first, oh, I don't know, if, I, I don't want to say we first learned about him in Waking Sleeping Beauty, but I would say like we were really introduced to his like how involved he was in not just Beauty and the Beast, but several other films during the Disney Renaissance as well. And um, if you saw uh, uh, Waking Sleeping Beauty, you know that Howard's, Howard's life was unfortunately cut short. And ever since we saw Sleeping Waking Sleeping Beauty, I've been saying to Dustin, I wish there was more on Howard because I just found the way he worked, his methods, and just kind of like the way he writes lyrics and plays with words or just and everything, how he you know, coming from a Broadway background and taking that and putting it into animation was so interesting to me and I wanted to see more of that. Yeah, and even though we we already knew who Howard was because, you know, yeah, um, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin. I mean, he was a big central part of those, of pretty much the Disney Renaissance. And we were able to learn a little bit more about his involvement through Waking Sleeping Beauty. But yeah, there's just so much more about this individual, about what he's done, about his past, about um, his history and everything that we would just wanted to learn more more about him because he had his work had such an impact on us as kids because of those movies that he was involved with with Disney. And this was an interesting way that they that they directed and they built the documentary because I was expecting some sit down interviews of you know the people who who um, are still working with Disney today or still alive today and essentially kind of speaking on their experience in working with Howard and actually wasn't quite like that and I like the way they did it because they just did a lot of um, obviously it's a documentary so they recounted from um, Howard's very young childhood to to his final days and they did have enough material from all the past interviews that they did with Howard probably from you know working his work at Disney and some of his prior work when he was working on Broadway or should I say off Broadway I guess um, off, off, Broadway. off off Broadway I think that's where it really was <laughs> yeah and they had a lot of that where they they kind of built that into this documentary so it really felt more well-rounded and wasn't just really other people speaking about Howard but it was also Howard himself his his words that were recorded yeah. talking about a lot of his work um and we got to you know hear hear also like segment interviews from his family from his close friends from his partner all the way to everybody who who he, who he worked at Disney and it was really interesting because there was a lot of stuff we didn't really know about like for example how he really wanted a place um to put on productions of like these like plays that they would get these musicals that they would get and obviously way too expensive to just go and put it on broadway yes so they did it like literally on skit row and they built their own little theater and when you think like home built theater you're like okay like you know some chairs folding chairs whatever <laughs> and they showed in the documentary what the theater looked like i would say mm -hmm. i was really impressed it looked really 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 good that was really cool is the fact that we got a lot of video a lot of audio a lot of pictures from his past so it wasn't just kind of like yeah people sitting down and talking about it even though i do have to admit i did miss that a little bit because yes. they didn't actually have any of it so they'd have any of, all, what? Any of well for, i think for at least maybe the first half of the movie maybe the first one third of the movie there's actually no person like heads yes people like sitting down on the couch talking to you about their experience with Howard what it was all it was all voiceover and they would just have pictures and videos and images that they would flash up on the screen and a part of me really does wish that they had just a little bit more mm -hmm. of someone sitting down on the couch so you had more of a tangible uh, feel with who was talking. Yeah, you can feel that connection a little bit with with kind of the voices that are coming through and telling the stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to agree with that because and and luckily I was just kind of towards the beginning because at as it gets closer to the end, we did get a little bit more of like the talking head, you know, inter interview segments. Yes, a little bit more, but not too much. They really did focus 
as an overall theme, they try to do a voiceover uh, approach to it as opposed to the regular st- like interview style documentary, even though they used interview segments. But it's still a really well-rounded story of Howard's uh, career and his personal mm-hmm. life and how much he impacted all the people he worked with to the point when he got sick, how that affected not just his work, but him as a person and, and you know, like his mood obviously was unstable because he was so angry about this. And you kept on saying during this interview, like during not sorry, while we're watching the, the documentary that things were, I mean, I feel like he was always, you know, pushing, always working, always driving to the next towards his goal. But when he finally got there with Disney and he was so happily working on the little mermaid and then beauty and the beast, and then they're winning Oscars and there's all these things. It's so great. And that's when the horrible news hits and you're just kind of like, now why now everything is happening now and i just really wondered had that not happened what like would have what happened other movies Disney? would yeah what yeah what other work would we have gotten what other songs would we have gotten you know that become so iconic yeah. because something that i learned is i did not know how much he was involved with the production of little shop of horrors yeah and yeah. i was like this is really cool to learn about yeah and to learn about other things that he struggled with other things that he fought for and other things that he was like almost there he got he was getting so much acclaim for some of his work, and then one, the one thing that he was working on, I think, what is it? It was so, it was sing or it was smile. Smile, that was what it was. The musical, right? Yeah, the one yeah. that they were working on, trying to build up so it could be on Broadway, and how it just <laughs> fell flat on his, mm-hmm. fell flat on their face with it, and it just didn't work out. But then to hear him get finally get going, get that opportunity with Disney, and as soon as everything's like, yeah, I'm working with a great company, I'm doing what I love, I'm on the right path, and now I'm sick and I'm gonna die. Yeah, and, and the like, fact that he Are felt like he had kidding? to hide it as well. Yeah, that was really heartbreaking. Well, especially during, you learned a little bit more about the time too. True, we already knew about aid, the AIDS epidemics and how Ronald Reagan didn't handle it very well. And the stigma that came with it, the, Mm -hmm. um, what is it, they called it the gay cancer. And, uh, Terrible. And you're just like, ugh. And the fact that he, he was so scared to tell anyone about his condition, about what he was going through, and to fight and struggle to do what you love, but to keep something like that secret while you're going through all of these procedures Mm -hmm. has just got to be, you know, adding torture on top of torture. Yeah. So it was, you know, we got the good parts of of his work and his accomplishments, and then we got the bad part. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unfortunately, with it, it's such a tragic story because I think... He just had so much to offer, and it was literally, and I know Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, they're all really, really great, and I feel like for Howard, that was just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. It, it really, really was, and I and I just wonder what what other genius things he could have, like, created, you know, had, had the disease not taken him. So if you are a lover of Disney, this is something you... And you have Disney Plus um, because it's available on Disney Plus. You should absolutely check it out. If you love the Disney Renaissance films, this is definitely for you to kind of peel the curtain back Mm -hmm. and take a look at um, some of the work that was going on behind the scenes. And, of course, we also recommend Waking Sleeping Beauty if you haven't seen that as well. Um, Any final words about the documentary? If you you haven't watched either one of the documentaries, I would say first watch The Waking Sleeping Beauty so you get kind of like the entire umbrella story and then you get Howard's specific story, yes. which is just a nice little deep dive into his past, who he was as a person, who he was as a kid. He died when he was 39 years old. And to think about what he still had to offer and the incredible gifts that he gave, not just, you know, some people, but anyone who has ever seen those Disney Renaissance, you know, to be like, what else, what other jewels did he, could he have given to the world? And also something we, we, we kind of talked about, and go ahead and chime into um, the comment section below as well, if you've seen um, the, the documentary, is we were kind of thinking, now that Disney, you know, they're kind of going away from the hand-drawn, uh, hand-drawn animations, obviously we still have like, you know, the, the computer animated like Frozen. And, yes. And all the other um, really, really great movies out there, but they're also really into live-action remakes right now of their... 
Renaissance films, um, like Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and Lion King. And we were kind of saying, like, if Howard was alive today and he was still involved, <laughs> in, whether or not he was involved in Disney, like, what would he thought, what would be his thoughts on indiv- these individual movies? It's just something kind of like, yeah. you wonder. I mean, we don't, we will never know, but it's just uh, kind of fun to. What to would he have thought there. of the remake of. Um, of Beauty and the Beast, what would he have thought of the remake of the of Aladdin? And when it comes out, the remake of The Little Mermaid. Mermaid. Whenever that, whenever that's gonna because that's be. I think that was really his that was his that was his first entrance yeah. into Disney, and then yeah, um, Beauty and the Beast. So it would it would be really interesting to get his take. Yeah, to just sit down and have lunch with him, kind of a thing. <laughs> hey, what do you think of these movies? Well, it's a beautiful uh, documentary done by Don Hahn and um, the same the same director who did *Waking Sleeping Beauty*. So there's a there's a bit of like overlap there as mm-hmm. far as the storytelling because he was he was there as well. Disney so, Plus does great documentaries. Yeah. Um, well, you guys, that's it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.